All right, let's go with the Tower of Kurith Ungle. Good golly, this is a lot of cards, but luckily we have seen most of them before. So we got a Grey Wanderer Sam deck. So you got Sam with his 3-1-1-3, and he readies when we engage an enemy with a higher engagement, and then he gets a stat boost. We also have these burdens in play, so overcome by grief and the staging and burdens shuffled into our encounter deck. One of them is going to get shuffled into our deck after we draw our opening hand. We also have these boons, so the Esquire of Rohan and Gondor we're not going to use. Old Bogey Stories and Lembus are going to get attached to Sam, and then Ho Tom Bombadil will get put in our hand once we draw our opening hand. Sam is also a tireless ranger, so he's going to have plus one defense. In addition to being a tireless ranger, Sam is also a gray wanderer. So I get to search my deck for an attachment that costs one and attach it to Sam after I draw my opening hand. I'm going to be looking for the dagger of Western A's if I don't draw it. Then side B of the contract says the first non-unique card I play in the planning phase does not require a resource match. And then I can raise my threat by one to choose two. Ready, my hero. Give my hero two resources or heal three damage from my hero. And I just want to remind everybody, you're supposed to place your starting heroes, including any permanent boons that would be attached to them, and then you draw your opening hand, take a mulligan if you want, and then you set up the quest. That can matter. Like in the uruk -hai, Pippin should have been one of my starting heroes, which would have made my threat plus six. I uh, screwed that up. So in this scenario, I'm going to go through the quest setup as well before I draw my opening hand, just because it seems to flow better for video purposes. But you are supposed to draw your opening hand before you set up the quest. Okay, so this quest in campaign mode tells me that I am supposed to attach a heavy burden to the hero if last of the company attached. And then I'm going to choose an item boon, except Andriel. From the campaign pool, I'm going to set that aside out of play, and then I'm going to remove the burdens with these icons on them. We flip this card over, and there is an effect that happens when we advance to stage 3A. Let's worry about that when we get there. We have enough going on. Okay, let's take a look at the quest card. So the quest card says we have to pass the two watchers and set up. We're going to set Shagrat aside out of play. We're going to add the two watchers to the staging area. Location side face up. We're going to add the topmost chamber to the staging area. We're going to lose control of the ring bearer. We're going to place it face up underneath the topmost chamber. So Frodo is up there in the chamber. And then we are going to attach last of the company to one of our heroes. That, of course, is Sam. And Sam will also have the one ring that he got when he looted Frodo's corpse. Okay, last of the company. Uh, the attached hero gains the ring bearer trait. Can't lose control of the first player token. Action! Exhaust the one ring and raise my threat by one. To choose an enemy until the end of the phase, that enemy gets minus X threat, where X is the attached hero's willpower. Okay, I also have a heavy burden. So this is a permanent burden we earned in our last quest with Frodo and Sam. He's going to have it because he's the ring bearer. And at the end of the planning phase, we either have to raise each player's threat by one or exhaust the attached hero. Frodo's in the topmost chamber. It's just a 1-1. One, one. It's immune, and we can't travel there unless there is at least 18 progress on stage 2B. And to travel there, we're going to add Shagrat to the staging area. And then the two Watchers, we have to get through these guys. So right now they are X-Threat, where X is twice the stage number of the main quest. Forced, after the players travel here, we're going to flip the two Watchers to the enemy side and put it back into the staging area. I know that was a lot, but when it's all said and done, we have three threat in the staging area. Frodo's in the topmost chamber. We're not going to be able to draw a card on our first turn, thanks to Gandalf's delay. Sam is plus one defense. He's the last of the company, and he has the ring. All right, let's take a look at 1B. What do we got to do? It's zero progress needed. Each non-unique location gets minus one threat and cannot leave the staging area. While the two watchers is in the staging area, enemy side face up, it is considered to be engaged with each player. The players cannot advance while the two watchers is in play. And then I lost the next three games. This deck is very similar to the other Sam and Frodo decks because, well, there's only so much you can do when you just have one hero. So the Frodo I'm using is the one where he spends a resource to boost his willpower and attack to the end of the round. As I've said, Sam is a Grey Wanderer, and the card he's going to be grabbing is the Dagger of Westernaise. I was struggling with this quest 
because I kept having him grab Strider, which lets him quest for plus two and not exhaust, but I actually need attack power. To get through stage one, I'm gonna need to deal with the two watchers and it takes a little bit of attack to do so. So I'm gonna need to have the Dagger Western Ace to help me attack. The Dunedain Mark I added to this deck is also a way to help him attack. And then of course, Sting is amazing, giving him a stat boost to all of his stats and it has that direct damage ability. And then to help me defend, instead of Hobbit Cloak, we have Ancestral Armor, plus two defense and plus two hit points. He already has that Ranger Boon to give him plus one defense. So if I engage an enemy with a higher engagement, I'm defending for three, five with the armor. The extra hit points are amazing because there is an orc that has two archery and when it engages you, it deals two damage. So I needed to at least get up to five hit points. Another way to add hit points is the spare pipe. So the spare pipe gives him plus one hit point and then it lets me find an event in my top five cards. Super helpful. The events I'm looking for, believe it or not, the Shire Folk. Even though I'm starting at eight threat, threat is a huge issue in this quest. It goes up so much between a heavy burden and the Grey Wanderer and then effects within the quest. My threat just goes up like nuts. So I need to draw at least two of these, I would hope. Uh, other events tasted again. So readying and attack boost, very good against the Watcher. And then Shadow of the Past is amazing because at stage two, being able to put a certain card on top of the deck is extremely helpful. And there's also a card that makes an orc attack another orc. So I had considered potentially using small target and silver lamp, but it was just, it was too many cards. It didn't work, especially when the encounter deck gives me a card that makes orcs attack e each other. So if I can just put orcish howls on top of the encounter deck with Shadow of the Past and deal it out as a shadow card, well, that's great. To also help the orcs fight each other, we have infighting. We have our card draw. We have our three copies of Strider, so I'm hoping to find that to help me find my copies of Strider, all of my songs, including the Song of Hope, which is super thematic, the orc disguise, which is wonderful for stopping an orc attack, the fireside song, which is gonna boost my willpower, the readying from Fast Hitch. Master of the Forge is in this deck, three copies. I need to find one. It's the most important card to find in my opening hand. If I don't have Master of the Forge, I'm almost always gonna take a mulligan. The only reason I wouldn't is if I somehow drew a copy of all of these attachments that I was looking for. Having Master of the Forge, always digging me out an attachment every round is super important. And then I also included Sam's Thoughts of Home with Rosie Cotton. So within this chapter, he's talking about the Lady Galadriel and then he's also talking about home a lot while he's traveling by himself, chasing down the orcs that are carrying Frodo. He even has that vision of himself as that master gardener towering over the lands with slaves working his fields. And then his simple hobbit sense comes back and he realizes, no, I am just Samwise Gamgee, Hellfast's son. I just want the simple hobbit life and so that's why rosie's in here plus i also need her so her ability to exhaust and give him plus two to any of his stats based on her willpower i'm not doing any tricks where i'm boosting her willpower she's literally just here to give him the boost wherever he needs it uh super helpful because like i said with my threat going up i can't count on him getting boosts from his own ability or from things like hobbit cloak and whatnot so to build for this quest, I really had to kind of change my mindset and just assume I was not gonna have super low threat. But if I ever need to quickly drop back down, Sam can vanish from sight and then I can treat my threat as if it's 20. That actually comes in handy quite a bit. I wish I could include more copies, but this is a very tight deck list. I wish I could include more songs. I only have uh, between the Fireside song, which is one, I only have seven other songs. I wish I could include more, but I absolutely have to have some way to attack. Now, the one thing you have to be careful of is Ancestral Armor, the Dagger of Westernaise, and Sting are all restricted, and I can only hold two of those. So I'm going to start the game with the Dagger of Westernaise. I'm going to hopefully find the Ancestral Armor, and then if I ever find Sting, I drop the Dagger and replace it with Sting. All right, let's get back to the game where I actually win, game number four. So I lost the other games at various different points in the quest. I 
actually traveled to the topmost chamber in one of them, but yeah, there's a lot that can go wrong. All right, what do we got? Uh, threat reduction, songs, card draw, jeez. Uh, okay, no, uh, that's just getting shuffled away. That was terrible. I need Master of the Forge. I would love Strider. I would love a Dunedine Mark. Basically, I need to be able to destroy the Watcher or sneak past it, I guess, thematically is what I'm doing. And I, I need cards that help me do that. That's what I'm looking for right now. So we got Drinking Song, Song of Wisdom, Fast Hitch, Sting, Orc Disguise, and Threat Reduction. Okay, not great, but I do like seeing Sting. I really do. Getting a stat boost to all my stats is extremely helpful. Now I need to go find the Dagger of Western A's. Okay, there it is right on top of the deck. So thanks to the Grey Wanderer, that goes in for free. It gives him a plus one attack, plus two against an enemy with a higher engagement. Let's shuffle in the Searching Eye into my deck. So hopefully I never draw that. And then, uh, let's see, Gandalf's delays on top of my deck, so I don't draw a card. And I'm putting die on these cards to help me keep track of Sam's stats, because they do go kind of crazy. Okay, uh, let's see. That's not supposed to be the enemy side. It's supposed to be the location side. Give the encounter deck a shuffle. And then I have my threat at 42, because that's where I ended when I uh, lost the last game. It's only supposed to be 8. So, yeah, it can go up to 42, and it can go up even higher. All right, resource. No card drawn. What do I want to do? So the first non-unique card I play does not require a resource match. And I think I really want to get some readying on Sam right away. So let's trigger the Grey Wanderer. So I'm keeping that over by my threat dial. So I remember to raise my threat when I trigger it. And then I'm going to give Sam two resources. And then the first card I'm going to play is Fast Hitch. So that'll allow him to ready. And then the second card I'm going to play is Sting. And so he's going to get... Plus one to all of his stats, but not hit points. And then when I defend against an enemy, I discard the top card of the encounter deck, and I deal damage to the enemy equal to that discarded card's threat. Really awesome. Uh, absolutely amazing card. Okay, so I have four willpower, four attack, and three defense. And then the defense and attack can go up if I engage the enemy with a higher engagement than mine. Let's play the Shire Folk. We're going to drop my threat by four, and then I'm going to trigger a heavy burden and raise it by one. So I am currently at six threat. And so now we have another decision to make. Do we not send anybody on the quest so I can defend? Or do I send Sam on the quest and then not defend? Either way, I'm going to have to raise my threat, as you will see. I decide not to send anybody on the quest. So we're not sending anybody on the quest. We're currently up against three, and then we get a two-threat winding stairs, but it's actually only one threat, thanks to the effect on the quest card. So let's raise our threat by four. So the Shire Folk kind of canceled that out. So we are now at ten threat. And let's travel to the two Watchers, and it is now on the enemy side. So what I found out through all my losses is I absolutely have to travel to the two watchers on turn one, and hopefully I can kill it during turn two. Okay, this two watchers is a two threat, five attack, two defense, four hit point, Mordor enemy. It's immune, it can't be actually engaged, and then forced when it would do any amount of damage, we instead raise our threat by the amount of damage. So that's why I was either not going to quest or I was not going to defend. Either way, I was going to have to raise my threat. So let's exhaust Sam to defend. He's defending for three, and the shadow is plus one attack for every damage on it. Okay, well, I'm glad to get that shadow before I actually damage this thing. So I have to raise my threat by two, so we're up to 12 already. And then I can attack back for one, two, three, four. So I can do two of the four damage. So if I can kill this thing next round, we can advance. And that's super important because the longer you stay here, the more locations build up in the staging area. And it's just not good. You have to be able to defeat these watchers. So I'm feeling pretty good about this. And the card we draw is Shadow of the Past. This is a good quest for Shadow of the Past. You want to be able to manipulate the encounter deck. Okay, first card... I can play that's non-unique, doesn't have to have a sphere match. So I'm going to play Drinking Song. Count my cards. I have four because I control a Hobbit hero. I can 
draw five cards. So let's shuffle in the four cards and I'm gonna draw five and I am looking for Strider. I am looking for Master of the Forge. Actually, Master of the Forge, that is my number one card. So let's see if Master of the Forge shows up. Come on, please. Uh, spare Pipe, okay, that's not bad. Uh, there's my armor, there's Strider infighting and master of the forge okay yeah not complaining about that as you can see i'm like well that works so uh that's awesome so i have to play either neutral or leadership cards now so i'm going to play strider so as long as i control five or less characters i get plus two willpower and if i control two or less heroes i do not exhaust the quest Okay, so I could trigger the Grey Wanderer, but I'm going to wait to see if I need to ready Sam for some reason. So now let's do a heavy burden. I'm keeping all these things over by my threat dial to help me remember. So I'm going to put a token to say, yes, I did the heavy burden. I raised my threat instead of exhausting my hero. We are currently up against five, and then we reveal Evil Vigilance. Okay, well, this is a great card to reveal at any point during this quest because it is either discard a questing character or raise my threat by one for every questing character. I only have one questing character, so I'll just raise my threat by one. We quested for six without exhausting, so we actually make a progress, and now let's do defense. It's going to be three against five, exhaust to defend. Uh, the shadow is exhaust a character I control. Okay, good, I did not ready Sam. I have to remember, don't ready until after the shadow because that shadow does exist okay and then i can swing back for four that's enough to take out the watcher and that's enough to advance us to stage two on turn two which i absolutely need to do okay 2a fighting in the tower when revealed shuffle the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck discard cards until x enemies are discarded or x is the number of players in the game add the enemy to the staging area because that's what you need to do after you just couldn't travel anywhere you need to discard cards until you find an enemy okay the enemy we found is a orc of mordor normally he would surge but since he was added to the staging area he does not he is one threat and he has a when engaged effect okay 2b 18 progress needed and here is the super swingy solo mechanic forced at the beginning of the quest phase, discard cards from the top of the encounter deck until an enemy is discarded. If there is another copy of that enemy already in the staging area, discard both copies. If not, add the enemy to the staging area. This stage cannot be defeated unless the topmost chamber has been explored and in the victory display. So, as you can see, that means we're going to be adding an enemy every round, and unless we get lucky, we're revealing two cards around. So uh that's that's pretty terrible i mean you just you just need a little luck okay fast hitch awesome but you do you need some luck because if you keep getting different enemies it's it's just a lot to handle if you if you had more than one hero you could do this but trying to do it with a mono sam deck is very hard having uh, you know two encounter cards being revealed around so all right what do i want to do here before the last round ended, I triggered the Grey Wanderer to give Sam two resources, so he currently has three. I think I'm just going to play the Spare Pipe, so it's going to give Sam plus one hit point, which he needs, and then I get to search my top five cards for an event. So let's see what event I get, and then maybe I'll use Grey Wanderer to put the armor on, but let's see what, let's see what event we get here. Top five cards. Uh, we have two events, Heed the Dream and uh, Taste It Again. Okay, Taste It Again is excellent, so... I can ready and get plus two attack against an enemy that I just defended with a higher engagement. Uh, that's pretty huge. That's pretty important at this point in the game. So I'd like to kill any enemies that I engage and that's going to help me. So I only can play leadership cards or neutral right now. I think I'm going to not trigger the Grey Wanderer again. I can keep a resource on myself for taste it again. And then I should be able to put the armor on to, uh, next turn. Okay. So I'm going to do a Heavy Burden by exhausting Fast Hitch. So I exhausted myself to the Heavy Burden, and then I readied with Fast Hitch. Now we discard cards, so we get an enemy, and we get a Wounded Uruk. So it comes into play with two damage on it. All right, so we did not get to discard the one already in staging. So that means in the staging area, uh, we got six threat. Okay, that, that's not terrible, but that's all I can quest for. And then we reveal a three threat, Bloodied 
courtyard and when it's the active location we deal damage whenever an enemy enters a staging area we damage the enemy okay so we added three threat which means we are currently under questing by three so I can trigger the effect on last of the company if I raise my threat by one I can make the wounded Uruk have zero threat and then I only have to raise my threat by one for under questing. So basically, instead of raising my threat by three, I raised my threat by two. I mean, any threat I can save is good. So we put the ring on and did that. Now let's travel to the bloodied courtyard. And to travel there, we got to raise our threat. Can you see how your threat just goes up like crazy? We started at eight, and I already played uh, a Shire Folk, and we are currently at 20. So our threat has gone up quite a bit already. Pretty crazy. Let's engage the Wounded Uruk, so that's going to give Sam a boost to all of his stats. The Wounded Uruk is attacking for 5 because it engaged me, and I can exhaust a defend. I trigger Sting, look at the top card, no threat, so we don't do any damage to the enemy. And then it's 5 against 4, no shadow, so Sam is going to take 1 damage. And then because I haven't triggered the Grey Wanderer yet, I can raise my threat by 1, exhaust the Grey Wanderer, and then... I can ready and give myself resources. I can swing back for five and kill this wounded Uruk. And so this is where, after losing and losing, and me realizing getting a weapon on Sam was more important than getting Strider really comes into play because I need to keep killing these enemies. When I was building the deck, I kept losing basically because of combat. And willpower eventually comes online. I just have to assume it's going to come online. Okay. I'm getting myself in the habit of making sure I put the enemies on top of the encounter discard pile when I discard the enemy in the shadow. If, for example, the shadow had been the same orc that's currently in staging, that would be a great card to use Shadows of the Past to put on top of the encounter deck because when I start the quest phase, the enemy that I would add to the staging area would be the same as the one in the staging area and they'd both get discarded. All right, we go into the next round and I get a Song of Wisdom. Well, that's nice because I have a lot of... Uh, lore cards, so it, it is nice to get a Song of Wisdom. I'm going to start out by playing the Grey Wanderer, so I raise my threat. That means I can heal and collect two resources. So I really try to use the Grey Wanderer in the planning phase only if I can do two things. And so if I ever have damage on Sam, I, I don't feel bad using it. So now I have a decision to make. I can play the first card and not require a resource match. So I think I'm going to start out by playing the Master of the Forge. So it's uh, an event with stats, as John likes to say. And then I'm going to play the Ancestral Armor on Sam. So Sam is going to get plus two defense and plus two hit points. So with the spare pipe, Sam now has six hit points and he can survive the Archer Orc that does direct damage when it engages you and Archery too. I needed extra hit points on Sam to survive that. And I also have the Master of the Forge to look at the top five cards and draw me an attachment. Okay, so that is excellent. So now I'm defending for at least five, but that is my second restricted attachment. So I need to get rid of the dagger of Western A's. So I'm going to keep Sting and get rid of the dagger. So now I'm only attacking for two, unless the enemy engaged me with a higher engagement. So Taste It Again is going to be helpful. And I honestly, I just have to hopefully find these Dunedain marks with the master of the forge. That's how the deck works. Takes a little luck. All right, let's discard till we get an enemy. Come on. Yes. That's great. Go ahead and kill each other. I need that. I need that kind of luck for this quest. And it's a solo game. So, you know, it's it's hard when you're revealing two cards. So let's get rid of an enemy. All right. Uh, I forgot about the heavy burden. So I'm currently always exhausting Sam. I'm trying not to raise my threat. So he would have uh, exhausted and then fast hitch would have popped him back up. So I got to remember heavy burden at the start of the quest phase or end of the planning phase. However you want to think about it. Before you start doing the quest stuff, heavy burden. Okay, and then the card we reveal is another great card, Evil Vigilance. So I only have to raise my threat by one. So, I mean, I'll take it. I'll take an easy round. I have definitely lost this quest right about this time because uh, you just get, end up with three different enemies in staging, and it's insane. So I'll take it. I mean, this is my fourth game. I'm exhausted from playing this quest. We don't even clear the bloody courtyard. We place three progress. Now we're going to trigger Master of the Forge. He finds us the Fireside Song, so let's grab that. That's going to help me quest. It's just so much to have to try to get online with just one hero. And this quest was not designed in a way to be one hero friendly. I wish it was. I really wish the quest made every player start with one hero only. 
Like, you can only bring one hero on this quest. We find a song of travel the next round. Because that would be thematic, right? Like, everyone just gets one hero, and then the quest would have been designed with that in mind. But it's not. It's designed as a quest where you would have three heroes. So, uh, very difficult to play the quest this way. Let's start out with Master of the Forge, and we're going to look, and... Man, he whiffs. I... I'm kind of in shock at that. I can't believe he whiffed. <laughs> it's... It's pretty incredible. There's still a ton of attachments that he could have found me, but okay, uh, he whiffed. And you know, it's like I drew the Song of Travel, so it would have been nice if that was the second card down and the Master of the Forge would have found me that and I drew something else. Okay, I actually, I'm going to trigger the Grey Wanderer, even though I only can do one thing. I'm gonna give Sam two resources and spend those two resources on Fireside Song. So every song attached to Sam gives him plus one willpower. Fireside Song itself is a song. So now I have seven willpower. And even though I could play another song, I'm gonna keep that resource for Taste It again, because like I said, I'm exhausting to the heavy burden. So we discard until we get, okay, so we get the little Snaga Sniper, Snaga, what the heck is this thing? Archer, I call it the Sam Killer, because it does two damage when it engages you, and it has archery too. So that's four damage if you decide to engage it. So that kills Sam. So, I mean, it's just basically anti-Sam tech. All right, we reveal the Torchlit Hall. So that is two more threat. So we are currently questing even. So what I'm going to do is put on the ring and I'm gonna cancel the two threat of the enemy. And that's gonna let me make two progress. So one progress goes on the bloody courtyard and we finally place our first out of 18 progress on the quest. And let's not forget, because the bloodied courtyard was the active location, that archer took a damage when it came into play. All right, let's travel to the Torchlit Hall. It's a 2-3, and then it has basically the same effect as the quest card. So we're going to discard cards until we get an enemy, and if it's the same enemy as one in staging, we discard it. Come on! I mean, I'll take it. I'm not, I'm not even, like, overly surprised that I'm getting lucky because... I know it pretty much has to happen for me to win, so I'll take it. I mean, I could have taken an attack by pretty much any enemy that we revealed, and I could have handled archery as well. I was set up, but I'm going to take a free discarded enemy. So we have no enemies. I'm going to, I'm just going to just carry on. I, mean, I just know that's what has to happen for me to win this quest with this deck. All right, we have two resources on Sam, and we're going to play two songs, and that's going to put my willpower up to nine. We are getting to the spot where I'm going to be able to take this quest down. I survived the early rounds. I had some luck with enemies discarding each other. Pretty thematic, really. All right, heavy burden. I still don't want to raise my threat, so I'm going to exhaust Sam and then ready him with fast hitch. I still have the Grey Wanderer to pop me back up, and then that would give me resources for Taste It Again as well. We discard until we get an enemy. Whatever it is, it's going to stick around. All right, we get this Uruk Soldier. It's a three threat enemy. It raises my threat when it engages me. It's the biggest of the enemies that there's multiple copies of. So we are currently up by three, and then we get another wounded Uruk. So just like that, we now have two enemies in staging. So that's how fast it can build right back up. So that's why I take any luck I can when this quest just can swarm you. All right, I'm going to put the ring on due to last of the company. I'm going to get rid of three threat in staging because we need to make as much progress as we can. So that is going to let us make four progress. So we are going up to two. 16 to go. All right, uh, let's travel to the winding stairs. So that's gonna give all enemies plus 10 engagement. And to travel there, we have to exhaust. So I will exhaust Sam, of course. And then let's engage the wounded Uruk. It's gonna be attacking for five. That readies me because the engagement is higher than my threat. So that's nice. I popped back up, I get stat boosts. I'm defending for six. So let's exhaust to defend. We trigger Sting, come on Sting. All right, ooh, and that. That enemy is a unique enemy, and that is an excellent one to not have enter the staging area. So it was three threats, so it killed the wounded Uruk. The shadow was that vigilance treachery that only raises my threat by one. So I'm going to make sure that's on top of the deck. Maybe I could get it on top of the encounter deck. I, I doubt it, but I'll try. Ooh, gosh, there's the searching eye from Master of the Forge. Okay, that, that was coming. Uh, do I want Orc Disguise or Song of Wisdom 
from Master of the Forge. I think I'll take Orc Disguise. I don't trigger Master of the Forge in the planning phase if I don't have any resources to pay for any attachments he finds me. I'd rather keep a character ready just in case something crazy happens. I never triggered the Grey Wanderer last round, but that's okay. All right, we draw Rosie. Okay, thank goodness. I just need that ability to boost any of my stats at least once. I can put a fast hitch on her and then she can be used in two different phases. So that's nice to know that I have. So I have a fast hitch, I have Rosie. Ah, taste it again. I have really good options. Orc Disguise boosts all enemies' engagement costs, which actually matters in this situation since I'm raising my threat so much like I just did to trigger the Grey Wanderer we're gonna spend those two resources on Rosie so you exhaust her and her willpower can be added to any of Sam's stats limit once per phase so I'm not doing anything to boost her willpower it's just a way of him thinking of home and that gives him a boost alright I'm gonna keep a resource on Sam for taste it again so now, oh, Chad, heavy burden, heavy burden. There you go, don't forget. Okay, exhaust Sam to a heavy burden. And now we discard until we get an enemy. Come on, give me one of these Uruk soldiers. Oh, there goes Orcish Howls. That's how you can get enemies to attack each other. Ah, and there goes one of those Vigilance. Okay, uh, we ended up with that little Surgy Orc again. So two enemies in staging at the moment. We are currently up against five. Sam is questing for nine and I can wait to use Rosie until after staging. So let's just send Sam for nine. We're up against five. And the card we reveal, uh, Ill Fate. So attached to a hero, counts as a condition. After a character I control is destroyed, raise my threat by two. Okay, not a huge deal. So let's put that on Sam, because I have to. And then it surged, and it surges into, yeah, geez. Okay, uh, another one of those Uruk soldiers. So now I have two of those in staging. And yeah, it added three threats. So I'm making one progress at the moment. Little bit of a decision to make here. I could clear the active location with Rosie and Last of the Company, but I don't think I'm going to. I'm going to leave it there because it gives all the enemies plus 10 engagement. And there's really no point in clearing it. I don't have another location to travel to. And here's what I'm hoping. I'm pretty sure going through the discard pile, I have not seen the third copy of that Uruk soldier, so there is a really good chance that I could get rid of both of those Uruks next turn. So, yeah, let's just not put on the ring so I don't have to raise my threat. That's really the main reason. I'm trying to not raise my threat. Small mistake here, I should have exhausted a character when I engaged this guy, so I would have exhausted Master of the Forge. And I'm, you know, base defense of five. Let's discard a card. Ah, dang, there goes Orcish Howls. So that one, the shadow says if I'm engaged with two enemies, Whichever one revealed that shadow attacks the other one, which is awesome. Okay, well, no shadow on the card, and so uh, I can't ready. So let's just use Master of the Forge. So yeah, I'm engaged with this enemy, and I just didn't want to raise my threat. I get really nervous about raising my threat. So let's grab this Song of Wisdom from the top five cards. I mean, my threat is going to go to 32, and then, you know, if I use the Grey Wanderer, it goes to 33, and enemies are going to start to engage me. So I got to be real careful about that. All right, next round. Okay, and I draw Shadows of the Past, which is pretty good. The top card of the deck is not Orcish Howls. It's this location, which, uh, you know, there's no point in putting that on top of the deck because I have to discard cards until I get an enemy. So if that Uruk Soldier had been the Shadow, then I could have put that on top of the deck. Okay, uh, let's play a second fast hitch on Sam, and then we're gonna play a Song of Wisdom on Sam. So he is now questing for 10. We'll do the heavy burden by exhausting Sam and then readying him. We are currently up against seven threat, and we have a lot of progress to make. All right, so let's discard cards. Come on, the odds are pretty good we're gonna get one of these Uruk soldiers. There it is, all right, that was, that was really good. I mean, there was only four cards left. There might not even have been another enemy in those bottom four cards. So that was pretty good odds, leaving those guys up there. Okay, and then uh, that gets rid of all that threat. So now we only have one threat in staging. So let's see what we get. Uh, we get another Winding Stairs, okay. So that's only two threat. We quested for 10. Let's use Rosie. So we quested for 12. There we go. Now we made some progress. That's nine progress. So one will go on the active and then uh, the other 
eight will go on the quest. So that's going to put us up to 10. Okay, cool. We only have eight to go. So finally, finally feel like we're actually progressing. It was nice to get rid of all those enemies. It's, uh, it's needed. <laughs> you need the luck for it to happen. But like I said, I don't even know if there's any, any, any other enemies left. And I did have Shadows of the Past to help me find that Uruk soldier. All right, let's uh, use Master of the Forge as the person we exhaust when we travel to the Winding Stairs. Let's defend. Let's have Sting trigger. Nope, no threat. And then, ooh, there was another enemy. It was one of those archers. Okay. Um, so he has a shadow that doesn't affect me. I can ready up, and then I can swing back for two. Well, that's that's not good. I need to find some of these Dunedine marks. And Rosie was exhausted, so I couldn't use her to help boost my attack. All right, I guess I'm just dinging this guy for one, and we're going up to 33 threat. Once again, I am not using the Grey Wanderer because I'm trying to keep my threat from increasing. And the card we draw this round is a Dunedine mark. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to play that right away, giving me an extra attack. That's going to be useful. And then, um, yeah, I'm not going to use Grey Wanderer. I don't want to increase my threat if I don't have to. And last round, even if I had gave myself resources, I could not have used Taste It Again because my threat is higher than this orcs. So, you know, starting with eight threat, and I'm already in a spot where my threat is canceling out some of these cards. Okay, the last card, there was two enemies left in the deck besides that Uruk soldier. I, I did not realize how lucky I actually got. Uh, discarding those two Uruks up in staging. Uh, pretty lucky there. Okay, so we did add another wounded Uruk to the staging area, so now we give the encounter deck a shuffle because we're in the quest phase, and let's commit to the quest. We're going to send 10. I did the heavy burden by exhausting Sam and readying him, and Orcish howls. So we deal one damage to each enemy in the staging area, and then enemies get plus one threat for every damage on them. If there was no enemies in the staging area, then that would surge. Okay, so... This is awesome. So we've added the third out of four damage to the Wounded Uruk. I'm going to play in fighting, so I'm going to raise my threat, trigger the Grey Wanderer, give Sam two resources, and because he has the Song of Wisdom, he can pay for lore cards, and the lore card he's going to play is in fighting, which lets me move damage from one enemy to another. So the Orc I'm engaged with killed the Orc that I just revealed, and uh, it's thematic as heck. Very happy I was able to pull that off. So there's only one threat in staging, so that's awesome. So now I'm deciding, do I want to use Rosie to make even more progress? There's four on the active, and I need to place eight on the quest. So right now I am placing 11. So that means I'm going to be one progress away from advancing this quest. Well, okay, it is what it is. So now let's get attacked. He's only attacking for three. We're going to trigger Sting. Sting does two damage to this guy, and we also get rid of one of the most annoying enemies in the game. And then, speaking of annoying, oh, that card right there. That enemy has an additional attack shadow, but I am so glad I didn't actually add it to the staging area. Okay, Sting's going to trigger again. Nope, no damage there. We're defending again. No shadow, and now we are not ready, so I can't kill this guy. He would have died to that first attack if I hadn't moved the damage around, but uh, I was able to survive both of these attacks, so I'm pretty happy about that. Let's trigger Master of the Forge, and I'm looking for an attachment. I get the Song of Hope, which is incredibly thematic. That's when Sam is crying and singing, and Frodo hears him and calls out to Sam, and Sam realizes that Frodo is up in that topmost chamber, accessible only by a ladder. And I think I'm going to be playing the Song of Hope on the same round that we actually travel to the topmost chamber. So uh, thematic win, 100%. Just uh, super excited that that's just the way the cards happen to fall. So definitely not my plan, but I'm going to take it. Uh, we get a drinking song, so there's another song. Okay, uh, yep, so Song of Hope, you can spend resources, up to three resources, and every resource you spend gives you plus one willpower. And, of course, it's a song, so... Uh, very useful. We're going to play the Orc Disguise. 
So Sam can spend that because he's considered to have the Fellowship Sphere. It's going to give all orcs up in the staging area plus five engagement costs. And then if I engage an orc, I can discard the orc disguise and that orc can't attack me. So that's awesome. All right, let's discard, let's discard cards <laughs> until we get an enemy. Is there any enemies? Uh, not yet. Okay. Uh, yeah, still no enemies. Wow. Okay. I mean, I'm not sad to see a lot of these cards go away. Holy cow. Okay, so there we go. The Uruk Soldier is back. So it's a three threat enemy. That was a lot of cards. And looks like I forgot to trigger the Heavy Burden. But like I said, I'm keeping it over there by the quest card and putting that token on it really helps me remember if I did it. Because if I don't see the token, I know I didn't do it. And I'm always just exhausting Sam and readying him. So um, I think I've caught it every round. It's just so hard to remember, to be honest. So we're up against four and we need to make one. So just sending Sam, and we get another bloodied courtyard. Okay, that is not a problem. So we've made more than enough to put the 18th progress on the quest. So that allows us to travel to the topmost chamber. So we heard Frodo, and now we are climbing up the ladder. And when we do so, Shagrat enters play. 46 engagement, 4546, Orc, Uruk, cannot have non-boon attachments, cannot take non-combat damage, cannot be defended or attacked by allies. And then forced, after progress is placed on the quest, Shagrak gets minus X engagement cost, where X is the amount of progress just placed. Pretty nasty guy. We don't need to engage him, so let's not. Let's engage this Uruk soldier. <laughs> so uh, when we engage him, we have to raise our threat by two. And now we're engaged with two enemies, but I have lots of readies on Sam, so I should be able to handle combat no problem. Let's get attacked by the Uruk Soldier. First we trigger Sting, so hopefully Sting can do some damage to this guy. And it's another Uruk Soldier. Okay, that's awesome. So that's three damage out of five dealt to this idiot. And he's attacking me for five, but I'm defending for six. And the shadow is plus one, plus two if I'm damaged. So that's fine. And I'm always glad to see those archers go away. So we don't take any damage. And then I can ready. I have Grey Wanderer still available. I have a Fast Hitch still available. So let's ready Sam with the Fast Hitch. Let's exhaust Sam. And we're going to trigger Sting again. Ah, yes. Two direct damage. That kills that, that guy. Okay, his shadow was one of those echoing uh, chamber thingies that is a location. I'm going to make sure that's on top of the deck. Let's trigger the Grey Wanderer. I'm going to ready Sam. I raised my threat. I'm going to give myself a couple of resources. And then I can attack back. And then Rosie can boost my attack. So we are able to kill that Uruk soldier. So that's awesome. We took care of both of those enemies. The only enemy in staging is Shagrat. The, the theme happening right now is really incredible because Shagrat is literally the only orc left in the tower at this point when Sam is at this stage of the quest. So uh, it's pretty cool that this is happening. All right, let's trigger Master of the Forge, see if I can find another attachment to help Sam when he's rummaging around looking for stuff. We get a Fireside Song and another copy of Strider. Strider's unique, so let's just grab that Fireside Song and we'll go into the next round. My threat is 39 and we draw Daron's Runes, so I get to draw two cards and then I can discard a card from my hand. We get Strider, ooh, and Vanish from Sight. That's gonna let me pretend that my threat is 20. That's going to be really useful. Okay, I'm going to get rid of Strider. So, yeah, happy about that. And then I don't really have a card to play. And I don't think it's going to hurt me to exhaust Master of the Forge right now. So let's do that. And let's just see if I can find something useful. Uh, Song of Travel? Sure. Yeah, let's get the Song of Travel. That'll give me one more willpower. So Sam will be questing for 12. Nothing wrong with that. So, yeah, Vanish from Sight and then Taste It Again is a really good combo to have in my hand right now. And then also Shadows of the Past. So I have lots of ways to kind of ensure that I'm not going to be revealing anything too crazy here at the final push. So let's play this Song of Travel. I'm now questing for 12. I gotta clear the one progress location. Let's do Heavy Burden. So once again, uh, Exhausting Sam and then readying him. Discard cards till we get enemy. There it is, it's one of those little Surgy Orcs. Okay, so that's just one threat. So right now we are up against, I believe it's eight. And I am sending 12 just by sending Sam. All right, let's make our one progress. Come on, Sam, you can do this. Climb up that ladder. Get Frodo. He's, he's up there. He's scared. He's alone. And he needs you. And the card we get is, oh, I'll take it, that evil vigilance. So just raise my threat by one. So we're at 40 threat. That's not scary. 
Okay, 40 threat. We do clear the topmost chamber, and then Frodo is here. So this is the Frodo where I can put on the ring and spend a fellowship resource to give him plus two attack and willpower. Okay, so that's going to advance us to stage three. A lot of stuff happens. So we have Frodo, and then we're going to get rid of the last of the company because Frodo is here. Frodo gets the ring. Frodo gets the heavy burden. Frodo is exhausted. And then Shagrat is actually going to grab the Mithril shirt. So Shagrat has the Mithril shirt right now. And then we're going to add the two watchers back to the staging area, location side face up. And it is a six threat location right now. And basically we have to just run out of here and get past these two watchers. Because side 3B of Escape from Kurith Ungol says the players cannot travel to the two watchers unless there's at least 12 progress on the stage. While the two watchers is in the staging area, enemy side face up. It gets plus three threat and plus three defense, and it's considered to be engaged with me, and we can't win while it's in play. All right, let's engage both of these enemies. Like I said, Shagrat right now should have the Mithril shirt in his grimy claws. Okay, uh, so if I wanted to, I could trigger Orc Disguise so he doesn't attack me, but I think I'm okay. He can't take non-combat damage, so I can't use Sting against him. And right now, because when he engaged me and boosted my stats, Sam is defending for six. So I should be able to handle this attack no problem. It's currently six against five attack. And the shadow is plus one. If it destroys a character, return the uh, enemy to the staging area. Okay, I'm good there. So I can ready now with fast hitch and I will defend. Now I can trigger Sting. So let's see if Sting can kill this little orc. Uh, three. Yeah, that does it. All right, Sting doing its work. Okay, cool. So Sting takes care of that guy. So he is gone. And then, you know, thematically, I don't want to kill Shagrat because he escapes with that Mithril shirt and causes a lot of pain and suffering to the other members of the Fellowship when they see it from the uh, mouth of Sauron showing it to them. So I'm going to try not to kill Shagrat. I should be okay defending him and... Yeah, we're good. I couldn't really kill him anyway right now, so there's no harm in leaving him engaged with me, I think. I think I'll be okay. So let's go into the next round. I finally only have to reveal one card instead of making sure an enemy always comes into the staging area. I actually have two heroes for once, and then uh, the card we get is a Shire Folk. Thank God. Like, I really need to make sure I draw two of them to feel good in this quest. So that's going to drop my threat back down to 38. So I wasn't, uh, you know, at 42. There's the searching eye. It's always almost there. Oh, man. We got we got nice choices with the Master of the Forge. I am definitely going to grab that fast hitch because Frodo right now is the one with the heavy burden. So I can't exhaust Sam's fast hitch to kind of cancel that out. So I'd either have to exhaust Frodo for the heavy burden or I could have raised my threat by one. Having that Shire Folk just come out also made the heavy burden not as scary. I mean, I was at 42, so raising my threat, even just an extra one, you know, very scary at this point in the quest, but uh, sitting pretty good. I also have that Shadows of the Past, so if I wanted to, I could make sure the card I'm revealing isn't too bad. So I will be exhausting Frodo to the heavy burden and then readying him. Last round, I traveled to the bloodied courtyard by raising my threat by one to go there. So any enemies that we add to the staging area are gonna take a damage. So that is a four progress location, and we have to make 12 on the quest. So that is a total of 16, and we're up against six threat. So I'm not quite sure we can do this. If I send Frodo and Sam, we are sending 14. So yeah, that, uh, that's not going to happen. And then we get the echoing passage. So it's plus one threat for each enemy in the staging area. Okay, well, that's nice because it's only one threat. But yeah, we're not even close. So that is seven progress made. I can spend Frodo's resource and put on the ring. So that's going to make it two more progress. And if I wanted to trigger Rosie, I could add two more progress. So I feel like I should just be trying to dump on as much progress as I could. I could also spend resources for Song of Hope. I think I'll save my resources, but I will trigger Rosie. So we're going to clear the bloodied courtyard, and we're going to play seven progress on the quest. I'm going to leave that location in the staging area because it's only one threat. All right, let's get attacked by Shagrat. So it's currently five against five. And the shadow card is, remember, I can't use Sting against him. The shadow card is plus one 
uh, attack for each damage on it. That's another reason not to damage these orcs because of that shadow. I get my math wrong here, and I think for some reason Sam takes uh, damage, but he shouldn't have. But then I trigger Grey Wanderer because I figure my threat is okay, and I heal the damage off anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I'm going to give him some resources, and I'm not going to attack Shagrat because that shadow really reminds me damaging orcs for no reason that you're engaged with can be risky. All right, let's go into the next round. Okay, my threat is 40, and the card we get is a spare pipe. Awesome. Okay, that's going to go right on Frodo. It's going to give him plus one hit point, and then I get to search my top five cards for an event. So let's see what we can find. Oh, wow. All five cards are events, but one of them is the Shire Folk, so we're definitely going to take the Shire Folk. I think threading out is the only way I could lose at this point. So let's grab the Shire Folk. I'm going to be able to drop my threat by four. And then I have Shadows of the Past in my hand, and the top card of the discard pile is a Wounded Uruk, which is only a two-threat enemy. So I think I'm just going to grab that, just so I don't reveal something crazy that I can't really deal with. So I'm only going to be adding two threat so I can do some exact questing to get the 12 progress on the quests. So we're going to trigger the heavy burden. I'm going to exhaust Frodo and then ready him. And then if I just send Sam, I am questing for 12 against 10. So I'll be making two progress. I need to make three more. So if I spend the three resources for a Song of Hope, that'll put us at exactly 12. And I can travel to the two Watchers. It flips to the enemy side, it gets plus three threat and plus three defense. And if we destroy it, we win. So we need to sneak past the two watchers. So let's go into combat. We have Shagrat and we have the two watchers attacking us. I don't need to worry about that wounded Uruk thanks to my orc disguise tricking him. He doesn't know that I'm a hobbit, so he's not going to engage me because he has plus five engagement. So we're getting attacked by two enemies and I just need to destroy the two watchers or sneak past them, I guess we should say. And neither of them can be affected by sting. So the one can't take non-combat damage, which is damage outside of just straight up attacking. And then the other one is immune. So, uh, wow, once again, plus one attack for every damage on it. So yes, not damaging Shagrat was definitely the right call. And then uh, I have uh, both my fast stitches still ready. So let's defend against the two watchers. And it is attacking enemy gets plus one if it destroys a character. Uh, it does not destroy a character, but I do take a damage. And then I make a small timing mistake. I should have triggered the Grey Wanderer before these attacks, so I could have got the two resources on Sam. So uh, let's just say I triggered the Grey Wanderer before the attacks, so I couldn't have healed this damage off because I wouldn't have had it, obviously. But there is no action window for me to trigger the Grey Wanderer and then play taste it again because that's a response to defending so I would have needed the resource before the attack happened so sorry about that mistake but uh, yes yeah, so Sam would have had two resources on him and then I would have triggered the taste it again from defending against the two watchers so that ready Sam gives him plus two attack Frodo can also attack and then he can put on the ring and spend a resource to give him plus two attack Rosie can help us and because the two watchers has plus three defense, that was enough attack to take out the two watchers. So we did sneak past, but so did Shagrat with our Mithril shirt. So Shagrat has escaped. We no longer have the Mithril shirt as one of our boons that we can use. But that is a successful win against this very difficult quest with a Mono Sam deck. Okay, up next, my goodness, the Black Gate opens and Mount Doom. There's a way to play those two quests together, and that's what I'm going to do. So I'll be playing those two quests in epic multiplayer mode where you bounce back and forth between the two quests at the same time. While Aragorn and company are at the Black Gate, drawing the Eye of Sauron to them, I am going to try to sneak Frodo and Sam to Mount Doom so we can cast the ring into the fire. All right, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this. Take care. Bye-bye.